As the fifth angel blew its trumpet, I witnessed a star descend from the sky and hit the ground. This light was the key to an abyss so vast and terrifying. A dense, oppressive haze erupted from that hole, resembling the massive spout of a massive furnace. The sun itself faded to an ember, and the once clear sky became a gloomy veil, shrouded in the menacing smoke rising from that evil pit. A swarm of locusts with a terrible power equal to that of poisonous scorpions living in the deepest recesses of the earth materialized from within that unsettling cloud. Their directives were chilling, ignore the soft grass, the delicate flora, and the life-giving trees, instead, concentrate their ruthless attention on the poor souls who do not have the holy seal of God engraved on their foreheads. It was not allowed for these torturers to kill quickly, instead, it was their responsibility to cause constant suffering for five agonizing months. Their sting was as painful as that of a scorpion, delivered with deadly accuracy. People will long for sweet release, for the reassuring embrace of death, in those terrible days, but it will avoid them like a ruthless and vicious ghost. They will be desperate to get out of the never-ending agony, but death will play a cruel game of hide-and-seek and always be out of reach while they suffer, and snared in an endless nightmare. This horrifying section comes from Revelation 9 verses 1 to 6. It is not a Hollywood screenplay that will soon come to pass, in fact, a lot of Hollywood screenwriters draw inspiration from scripture in order to create successful blockbuster films. However, I won't bore you with any made-up tale, instead, I'll talk about the truth of today and what might happen in the not-too-distant future. As you can see, the horrifying tale of the locust onslaught is far from over. Let me actually carry with the narrative from Revelation 9 verses 7 to 11. The locusts resembled war-ready horses uncannily. Above their heads, they wore crowns that resembled shimmering gold, their faces contorted into hideous human parodies. Although their hair flowed like a woman's, their jaws had the fierceness of lions, ready to rip and tear. Their wings created a loud noise, like the charge of innumerable horses and chariots charging recklessly into a bloody conflict and they wore breastplates as unforgiving as iron. They had scorpion-like stingers on their tails, and within those stingers was the terrible ability to torture unlucky people for a torturous five months. And the angel of the abyss, whose names are synonymous with destruction and annihilation, Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek, ruled over this horrible swarm. The locusts were commanded by this gloomy ruler, who personified hopelessness, in their ceaseless quest to cause agony. People were reminded of the biblical account of Moses and the Ten Commandments as they stared at the striking pictures of these swarming locusts. More specifically, it was the story of the ten plagues that fell on ancient Egypt as a result of divine punishment. In fact, in the story found in the Bible, God selects Moses, a highly esteemed prophet and leader of the Hebrews, to face down the Egyptian pharaoh. Moses gives the Pharaoh a severe warning, claiming that terrible plagues will strike Egypt unless he sets the Israelites free from slavery and allows them to return to their ancestral homeland of Canaan. The Israelites had a previous history before they arrived in Egypt. Their patriarch Jacob was a major factor in their initial journey to Egypt, where they had been invited by a Pharaoh. But as time passed, their standing changed from that of invited guests to that of slaves. This change took place under the reign of a pharaoh who became jealous of the Israelites' rising wealth and influence and finally forced them into the oppressive system of bondage. Even though he was nurtured in Egypt's royal court, Moses finally learns of his actual Hebrew ancestry and feels called by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and back to Canaan, their original homeland. This crucial point in the story establishes the framework for the ten plagues of Egypt to occur. There were locusts in the seventh plague. Serving as God's messenger, Moses informed the recalcitrant Pharaoh that an endless plague of locusts would invade Egypt, smothering every tree and devouring all greenery. Every time Pharaoh's heart became hardened and he refused to let the Israelites go, a new plague would break out in his country, 
making his people's suffering worse. Written by the Apostle John, the Book of Revelation is an apocalyptic and highly symbolic book that prominently references prophetic traditions and imagery from the Old Testament. Reading Revelation only as a code for modern characters or events, for example, comparing Apache helicopters to locusts, is speculative and not in line with the book's intended meaning. The imagery in Revelation was intended to communicate theological and spiritual lessons, provide early Christians who were being persecuted comfort and hope, and give readers a preview of God's final triumph over evil. Rather than trying to put modern interpretations onto an ancient and symbolic text, we can better appreciate the complex theological issues and eternal truths of the book by investigating the ties to the Old Testament and comprehending the symbolic language utilized by John. The detailed and realistic depiction of the destruction brought about by swarms of locusts emphasizes the symbolic significance of locusts in the Bible as agents of judgment. In an agrarian civilization, where crops were the primary source of food and income, the advent of a locust swarm was undoubtedly disastrous. One of the most important factors in comprehending the psychological effects and dread connected to the biblical locust plague image is the helplessness of farmers in the face of such an unrelenting and destructive force. The Bible frequently employs well-known and potent images from daily life to teach spiritual and moral lessons. The destruction brought about by locusts is a moving example of both divine wrath and the results of disobedience. It emphasizes the idea that one must look to a higher power for deliverance and atonement when confronted with such overwhelming forces because human efforts alone are pointless in such situations. There is a thematic continuity between these two biblical accounts, as demonstrated by a convincing parallel between the locust plague in the book of Exodus and the symbolic locusts in the book of Revelation. In each instance, the sense of divine judgment is communicated through the usage of locust imagery. According to the Exodus story, Egypt was plagued by locusts, which decimated both the country and its populace. They were a part of the set of plagues that were supposed to force Pharaoh to give up the Israelites. The locusts in Revelation come up out of the abyss to carry out God's vengeance. However, their specific command not to harm the earth's vegetation but to torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads underscores the idea that this judgment is directed towards the wicked and unrepentant, not God's faithful followers. This distinction is consistent with the biblical theme of God's protection for his people even in the midst of divine judgment. This analysis highlights the nuanced and layered nature of biblical symbolism, where similar motifs and images can be used to convey different theological messages depending on the context and purpose of the text. There is an intriguing correlation between Babylon's metaphorical existence in the Book of Revelation and the Oracle of Disaster against it in Jeremiah 51. In fact, Babylon is a major image in the Bible, standing for worldly powers that fight God and his people. Babylon is portrayed in the Book of Revelation as a representation of spiritual decay, decadence, and revolt. The Bible uses this imagery consistently as seen by the echoes of Jeremiah's prophecy in Revelation 18 and the illusion of Babylon as a burning mountain in the second trumpet judgment. There are some interesting connections between the book of Revelation's descriptions of the locust-like animals and the imagery in Jeremiah's prophecy concerning Babylon. These parallels highlight the idea of divine destruction and judgment as well as the thematic and symbolic links between these writings. Both times, the overwhelming and destructive force of God's punishment is symbolized by images of locusts or creatures resembling them. God's punishment upon Babylon and those who do not bear God's seal is described in Revelation as being as destructive as a swarm of locusts decimating a field. An additional depth of meaning is added by the thought that the church is represented by people who bear the seal of God on their foreheads, emphasizing the idea of divine protection and preservation of the faithful in the midst of the judgments and sufferings described in the book of Revelation. 
The view that Revelation presents regarding the psychological damage caused by the demon locusts is consistent with the text's symbolic and apocalyptic qualities. Although the book of Revelation is primarily concerned with spiritual and psychological themes rather than just physical destruction, it does provide vivid and occasionally unsettling imagery. Torment and despair are emphasized by the notion that the locusts cause a type of psychological agony that makes individuals yearn for death but are unable to find solace. Joel talks at the beginning of his book about a significant issue facing Israel. It isn't about grasshopper-like locusts devouring everything, chapters 1 verse 2 to 4. Rather, he's explaining the terrifying day of the Lord via the lens of this locust crisis. If Israel doesn't turn from their sins, God will punish them on this day in addition to his enemies. The army of the enemy will be formidable, resembling muscular war horses and having sharp teeth like lions, Joel 1 verse 6. The sky will also grow extremely dark, 2 verse 2. Joel 2 verse 25 compares this devastating force like a massive swarm of locusts. In the same way that the locusts deprived Israel of its vineyards, God will purify Israel by eliminating the evil. This concept is used by John in his literature to illustrate how terrible the day of the Lord will be. He presents a more terrifying image of a locust issue that appears to be right out of hell. Thank you for watching.